Are we alive? I always love how it starts at zero and then all of a sudden there's like 500 people in the room. It's my favorite. Welcome back everybody. Hello, Rhonda from Texas. I hope you're safe right now. This is the ongoing conversation up here, that's for sure, about weather coming in. Hello, hello all, welcome back. It's Thursday. We were saying earlier, Kaya, Carmen and I were talking about how did Thursday just appear out of nowhere? <laughs> it's wild. Sunny here in Toronto, it's, um, it's really hot. It's really hot for us Torontonians. It is hot, 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 but you know. Hello, Monica, I saw it really quick, welcome back. Hello, everybody. It's two o'clock, but we'll give you guys a couple of minutes to settle on in and get relaxed here. Very excited, Miss Kai is back with us today. Carmen, of course, is on chat, everyone. Say hello to Carmen. Aloha, Hawaii, I saw you. It's, I just can't believe it, it's August 27th. I don't know where the last four months have even gone in any shape or form, but it's been wild. It's been a wild ride. Hope everyone's doing well. Let us know how you're doing. Hopefully you're not in the path of Hurricane Laura or have been in the path of Hurricane Laura. We are thinking about everybody down there right now. And as, uh, as she makes her way north, it's not, uh, not great to be in the path of a hurricane. I was saying to Carmen earlier, I, I so vividly remember Hurricane Katrina, and I don't know if it had to do with age. Do you remember, Kai? Like, do you remember where you were or anything like I that? I could. I was in my kitchen, and I have family in New Orleans too. So I remember seeing it on like CNN, I think, and just being like, "Oh my gosh, what is happening?" So right, still very, very vivid in my mind too. Yeah, and I'm I'm thinking about the fact, you know, this year's been so different, and yet it, Mother Nature just keeps giving. <laughs> Yeah. She needs to calm down. Everyone needs to give Mother Nature a chill <laughs> pill. So a couple more minutes, everybody, just a minute or two, I should say, and we'll get started. We have some great things going here today for content. We're going to put up a quick little poll. So everybody, we're just curious about, you know, have you heard about Hi Mama before? If you're a customer with us, if you've never seen the app, this is your first time hearing about it. Where have you been? No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you've seen the app and never heard of it, if you're looking for more information, um, we can definitely get you some more information if you're curious. So please don't be shy there, okay? We'll end that up in a minute or two, and then we'll get started into today. If you're just joining us, I just wanted to recap as well. We're, we are thinking about everyone down there in Texas and Louisiana right now. And, and of course, as uh, Hurricane Laura moves up, up the coast, really. Um, we hope everybody's okay and, uh, and you're staying as safe as you can in these crazy times. So, hello, somebody here just joined the Hi Mama family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you haven't, you're still part of the Hi Mama family, but we're, we're a pleasure to have everyone here. I think we're going to get ready to let's dive in, folks. Let's get this rocking and rolling with Miss Kaya here. So, if you've never, if it's your first time, um, well, welcome. And if you've never met any of us, so I'm Ria. I am one of the early childhood educators here on the Hi Mama team. And uh, Carmen said, let's do something a little different. We're going to do fun facts about us. Um, I'm getting married in 23 days, and I think I might pull my hair out. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Carmen, come on, Carmen. She's the one on chat. But Kaya, if you want to tell us a little Hi. bit more about your fun fact here. Sure. So I'm Kaya, and my fun fact is that I won a watermelon eating competition. Uh, my belly hurt a lot after, but it's a very <laughs> proud accomplishment. Um, right before the webinar, I actually just ate a whole bowl of watermelon too. Like I'm obsessed, <laughs> obsessed. I want to know, like, how much watermelon is that, like, in a contest? Oh, a whole watermelon. A whole watermelon. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah. I could not. I could not. <laughs> Um, I had to pee a lot after. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Carmen, thank you for coming on. If everyone usually welcomes you in the chat, but tell us about your fun fact. Hi everyone. Um, and you're getting a lot of love in the chat, by the way, Ria. Everyone's saying that. congrats. And we have Allison who got married over the weekend. Congrats, oh, Allison. Oh, congrats. And Allison. she is still wanting to pull her hair out. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of the vibe. Um, yeah, I'm obsessed with food and yoga and we'll talk your ear off if you ask me about it and as usual guys i will be supporting y'all in the chat let's dive in everyone um of course as you know uh, as lovely as kaya and i are and carmen um we are not the faces of legal advice i don't know about you kaya don't i, I never thought about doing any sort of legal school yeah exactly whatsoever um but just so everyone knows we hope that at the end of this you guys take away tips tricks Obviously, things you can implement at your center that are not going to put you into any sort of legal position that you shouldn't be in. So please, 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 if you're looking for anybody, consult the right people, um, whether it be state licensing, provincial licensing, or you know, financial advisors, whatever it is you're looking for. Okay? I think we, that's the hard part we've covered. We're going to be looking a little bit more about virtual learning. This is a huge topic now, especially with back to school. Um, supporting that distancing learning and, and the balance between in class and outside of class. So we're gonna try and give you some tips there. Of course, talking a little bit about parents and the benefits and, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, I don't believe there's a right or a wrong answer of whether you wanna send your children back or keep them at home. It's totally it's up to you and your, and your personal situation. And then of course, Hi Mom is here to help. Um, we have a couple of great little pieces we wanna show you guys but i'm gonna let miss kaya kick it off and and then take it away here thank you so much ria i'm actually just reading all the watermelon comments i'm loving it um don't knock it till you try it but salt on watermelon just a little sprinkle of salt makes it so much sweeter um i don't know if anyone's tried it it's it's a southern thing too i think so if there's anyone from the south like tennessee um you know anyways so Let's uh, quit the watermelon talk. Let me know if you do try it or you like the salt on watermelon. So um, I'm here to kind of give a refresher on virtual circle time. Um, something that we've been doing a lot at Hi Mama. Um, we've actually been uploading them on YouTube for centers who don't have the capabilities to do circle time or who want to look to Hi Mama for some additional resources. These have been fantastic and a lot of fun to do. It's bringing me back to my early childhood roots in the classroom. Uh, so in a nutshell, what is virtual circle time? So not only is it super, super an, an important part of the day of every child's day, it's um, really is going to set the tone for the day. So you might, you know, when you're in the classroom, you may start, start with circle time or do it in the morning. It's a really great way to like introduce the theme, whatever you're going to be talking about um, for that day or that week. Um, and it really became more popular to do online virtual circle time during COVID. Um, we're so lucky that we are on a, um, we're, we're in a day and age where it's so easy to access technology and to use technology and, and a lot for free, um, which we'll be going over after some, some things that you can use to upload your circle time to. Um, so let's take advantage of that. Um, some options are for educators that you can record um, a session, a pre-recorded session, or if you're you're able to, you can actually run a live session. So live is really great. You have some interaction there with the, the children and uh, lots of pros and cons to, to each, whether you're able to do live or pre-recorded. And of course, um, if you are doing a live session, it allows for children to see familiar faces, to see your face and interact with other children. Um, I mean, unfortunately, we've been away from each other for so long. So if you're able to do live, this is a really great way to meet the new children and for each children to meet the new friends and see old friends, just like having a little community there, almost like being back on the carpet, right? Um, to put together circle time and your, your learning experience in general is quite easy and, and quite accessible. All you really need is a phone and internet connection at the end of the day. Um, phones these days, as you may know, they have fantastic cameras um, and you really just record by pressing a button. It's super easy and you upload just by pressing a button. Um, you can purchase additional uh, things to you know, maybe make circle time a little bit nicer for your, for your children. Um, something I discovered is the beauty of a ring light. Um, natural light is great, but I live in a small condo that faces east, so I actually lose morning light quite quickly. So a ring light has been a savior for not only my selfies, but also for circle time. 
and they're actually quite in inexpensive. You can get them online for like 20 bucks um, or like stores, like convenience stores even have them for like five or 10 bucks. Um, and they're, they're pretty accessible. Um, you can use a tripod as well. That's something I invested in. It's great to have your uh, phone or your device, whatever you're recording on, um, propped up just so that you can have your hands free to like tell stories and talks and show books and everything and do your songs. So if you're able to get a tripod, that's gonna bring it to a nice height for you and keep it hands free. And a pop socket, it's also quite inexpensive, a couple bucks. And um, you can pop it onto the back of your phone and, and again, have your hands free. Rhea. Pro tip, <laughs> yeah, pro tip, which uh, Kaya thought was absolutely amazing. So when I was filling in for Kaya for a couple of circle times, um, I didn't have any of these things uh, besides my laptop. But of course, my phone camera is much better than my laptop camera. So I did the next best thing. And we have a car mount for our cell phone uh, that has the um, silicone. So it like sticks to things. And this way I could stick it to wherever I wanted to prop it up. So if you wanted it on the window, this way I was getting some more light on myself, but still being able to record and not get shadows, things like that. Um, that would be my pro tip if you haven't laid your hands on any of these items yet. Amazing. Thank you, Rhea. Yeah, I was, I was just blown away by that one little tip. If you've got a car, you've got one of those phone holders and the light, the natural light just comes in. It's, it's great. Thank you so much, Rhea. And she's gone. Um, so setting up a filming area, you don't really need a lot of space. I live in a 500 square foot condo. I can assure you, you do not need space. This is actually my workspace and my circle time space when I was in, um, when we were more in a, in a lockdown here in Toronto, this is where I recorded. Um, so just having like a small space where you can sit, maybe have some notes in front of you and some materials. Um, I lived out of this little bin here on the left for, for quite a while. That, that's where all my materials and supplies were. Um, and just making sure that they're easily accessible um, is really the main, the main takeaway. On the right, that second image is now that I'm on the headquarters is starting to open up. This is the new space that I've um, I've kind of moved everything to. So it is nice to have a little bit more space. And that whiteboard there, that was a key item I grabbed in the beginning of lockdown, actually. I, I thought maybe I'll need this whiteboard for something. And it, in fact, came in quite handy when doing um, the circle time. So if you have access to like a whiteboard or maybe even a chalkboard wall behind you, use those to your advantage. They're great for visuals. They're great for like writing poems on. Um, and just like writing cute little messages on, they're really great so if you're, you're filming and you're doing learning. And on the back, if you're able to like write up cue notes, the beauty of filming is that you have an area to have in front of you like some cue notes, some cue cards um, with maybe things you wanna do, topics you wanna talk about, um, and you can just post those up. I remember in the classroom, I would always forget the million ideas that I had because um, everything was running through my mind, but now I'm able to have cue cards and have a, uh, space there. So that's really great. So take advantage of not having a live audience right in front of you there. Planning is super, super important. I'm a big planner myself. Um, I know a lot of my educator friends love to plan things out too, but it's super important. Let's it's back to school. It's the theme of, you know, planning again and falling in love with planning and being organized. So this is a great way to, to take those tips and, and use them. Um, so plan it out. You can get creative with a spreadsheet or write it down. I'm, I'm personally a writer um, and you don't have to be super fancy with a spreadsheet by any means. Just pop some things into Excel to keep yourself on track. What letter are you going to work on today or this week? What number? What color? Your theme? Really making sure that you're, you're not really like repeating things and that you want to cover everything that you want to talk about. So using a spreadsheet to your advantage gather and keep materials all in one place. So this here is in Hi Mama headquarters. It's where I have all of my materials um, and a nice shelf and it's categorized by different categories here like toys and um, art supplies, et cetera. So if you're able to have a shelf like this, you know, use that to your advantage, label things, put it in bins, keep it neat and tidy. And what I like to do once a week is just kind of go through and throw out like any, any garbage or anything like that or things I won't use um, and just kind of take inventory there. So keeping yourself organized. Um, and lastly, go with the flow. You know, things are going to be changing. Um, you might forget to do one thing one week. That's totally okay. Move it to next week. Kids aren't really going to know um, and really go with the, the children's learning. So if they're enjoying talking about dinosaurs for three weeks on end, go with it. 
if they're sick of dinosaurs after one day, let's change it up. So going with the flow has kind of been the theme of 2020. So let's take it into our learning. So I mentioned previously about recording or doing a live session. They both have their pros and cons and really do whatever you feel most comfortable with at the end of the day. Um, since I don't have a classroom anymore, we've been doing pre-recorded. Um, they've been really great because you can watch it over and over. They're pre-recorded. Um, if you mess up, you can do it again. Um, there's actually lots of different um, apps out there that are free where you can stitch two videos together and upload it that way. So if you want to record one in the morning, take a break, do it in, in the afternoon, you can stitch those two videos together quite, quite easily. Um, and also you have more time to practice and, and for things to go wrong. So if that cool science experiment you are doing doesn't turn out, you need to do something and, and tweak it a bit, you've got another chance by pre-recording it. And it doesn't use Wi-Fi, so um, you're able to really record it whenever and you just need your phone. The only time you need Wi-Fi is when you're uploading. So if you don't have the best internet or um, lower internet speeds throughout the day, this is a really great option for you. And of course, you can do it on your own time. If you're doing live, you get really great audience interaction. We've been hearing a lot from our community and our customers on how great it is to have those small circle times and have that interaction with their children again. So really great if you are able to do live and, and build those relationships. And of course, you can go with the children's learning. You can actually listen to their feedback. I don't like this. You know, let's let's talk about something else. You, you get that feedback right on the spot there. Um, lots of conversation, but it is a little bit more of a time commitment, especially with younger ones. You need to get the parents involved and whatnot. So really has its pros and cons. So let, it, let us know if you've done live or pre-recorded how it turned out. If you have any tips and tricks, throw them in the chat there. Creating a YouTube channel. So if you are doing pre-recorded or if you do a live session and are able to record it, similar to what we're doing with this webinar here, you can always upload it to a video platform later. Um, so YouTube is what we've been using here at Hi Mom. I know a lot of our customers, when they create their own circle time, they are using YouTube as well. It's free. You can make it private. And pretty much everyone knows YouTube. It's quite accessible. Um, and it's a great way to involve staff who are still a little bit anxious about returning, just having the videos live there. Um, and it's, it's quite easy to navigate as well. Like I said, you can just easily create a private YouTube channel. Um, if you don't want your face up there, which I don't blame you, um, you can make the, the videos private. So a little bit more into my planning process. I mentioned I use a spreadsheet to go through our circle time using our feedback from our community, what people like, what people don't like, and critiquing and changing uh, my circle time on a as-need basis. So first of all, just get organized with some sort of document. It can be written, it can be on the computer to keep your thoughts um, organized. And um, keep an ongoing document of the learning outcomes and themes for circle time. And this is going to allow you to document the children's learning and development as well. So maybe you're stuck on, you know, counting might be a little tricky. You know, maybe that's something that you need to focus on for a little bit longer. And then you can always reflect back and say, hey, for September, you know, we focused for four weeks on counting. But by October, they were pros. And you can see how that really paid off, what was working, what was not working. Um, and really lean into the children's learning that way. Um, so as I mentioned, reflecting is, is very key, it's very crucial. So if you're able to get feedback from other educators, from your families or you know, other peers in the, the field of ECE or, or maybe even your partner, get that feedback and say like, am I talking too fast? Was that a really boring circle time? Um, you know, is this book age appropriate? Is this something that, you know, really get that feedback and use that to your advantage. Um, so if you're able to work with other educators um, with this, then getting feedback is gonna be super valuable, especially from your families. Cause I think if we have pre-recorded sessions, you think they might like it, but then Turns out the kids absolutely hated it. Like get that feedback from parents if you're able to. And you can do that just by, you know, phone calls or sending out a quick survey, lots of different ways there. Um, and lastly, accommodating different learning styles. So as we go back into the classroom and have different learning styles and being more hyper aware, I think that's something we really need to bring into our learning and bring into our teaching styles. So, um, you know, that includes, you know, different types of learners, different needs, um, some children don't have all their vision, they don't have all their hearing, um, 
you know, different ways and different styles might be better, you know, loss of loss of vision and, and loss of hearing, having a pre recorded in like session like this is probably really great for them because they can really turn up the volume and they can get close to the computer. Whereas, you know, when they were in the classroom, they weren't able to always hear or there was chatter in the background, etc. Um, you know, it's got its pros and cons for sure. And things like attention span and, and difficulty paying attention is also something to be conscious of as well. Learning styles. So um, as I mentioned here before, each child has, has different learning styles there, but um, you know, there's, there's definitely some points to remember. You guys are the pro at the end of the day, work with parents, work with your community, see what's working. And that's why it's super important to get feedback from, from anyone about um, your teaching and your circle time. Hey, Rhea. Just, just to tag on to that, actually, thinking about like those learning styles, things like that, that the children are, you know, it, us as educators, we do our best to really cover every single one of them. And you, in thinking about some of my my educator friends, I have one uh, one specifically, she's very surprisingly very intrapersonal and, she, and she's kind of thriving through COVID right now. But on the same side, she's recognizing with many of the children that she works with, who are, uh, they they range in a variety of disabilities, but um, mostly autistic children, what she does work primarily with. And, um, you know, thinking about them right now and how, how it's just not as easy potentially having them virtually, but I think just being aware of their learning styles, as you were saying, Ms. Kai, is, is very important. And being able to help, uh, you know, provide a variety of tools or tips or tricks to just help the best best way possible, I think would be your good place to start and then even moving forward from there. So perfect. All right. Thank you so uh, much, Rhea. Just so you know, Ms. Kai, you were getting lots of um lots of things in the chat about, you know, ways that people are um, you know, doing their virtual learning right now. And and so it takes some take a couple of minutes. We're gonna pull a couple of great things. And what I'll do is dive into a little bit more about the distance learning, because this is of course like the hot topic right now with back to school. Um, and there's definitely a lot happening around, you know, what, what to do, are we going to do this, are we going to do both? It's kind of like a really interesting place. So, you know, really looking at the what and the why of distance learning when thinking about it coming into, coming into this the last couple of months, it's traditionally um, been, you know, college university style of learning where you, you took an extra course online um, and it was more of you were you're just trying to get all your credits in, but at the same side, it, it had that, you know, you weren't really physically in the classroom, but you only took on like maybe one, maybe two, or if you're like some of my friends, you took on several and maybe overdid it. But anyways, the whole thing there is ideally it was, you know, the old way of learning. I shouldn't say old way of learning. It was the way that, you know, older, older students would look at doing some extra learning. Whereas now, we we've had to adapt many centers are very much adapting and having to you know adapt in distance learning for an age that we are shocked that we're doing it but hey we're doing it everybody um so a couple of like key takeaways that i've had over the last couple of months was that a lot of centers are using their distance learning program whatever it may be to help supplement some of the income that you know sadly has been lost uh, because of working down with lower ratios, you know, expenses are, are much more different than they were six months ago. Um, and so ideally parents have been, you know, picking packages. I know we had, um, oh, and a name just flew out of my head here. They have been doing distance learning packages for a little bit of uh, time. And um, that's how they were doing some supplemented income without having to charge their parents their full tuition. So you have some varieties around in that sense. Um, but with it, you know, at the end of the day, you also still want to show value for your families. You're protecting your brand of your center and you're showing your families and potential families that, you, you know, there's something there obviously to come back to because I think we get a little lost in what's happening around us right now. So what the distance learning can be, like I said, it can be a variety of different things, but ideally within a center, um, obviously depending on their age, but depending on their age, let's look at that like toddler to older preschool, maybe that can early kindergarten age. It's a variety of circle times of activities, uh, whether that could be, you know, how to set up an activity for a parent that could be actually doing the activity, whether it's live or it's pre-recorded. But it, the variety is there. 
And, you know, at the end of the day, it can also show you guys, um, you can do show and tells, you can do live chats with a group of children. It's there at your will. So you guys make it, make it what you want to make it. And I'd also love if you guys want to pop that in the chat a little later, we're going to, we're going to prompt you guys with a couple of great questions. So prepare your, your virtual learning ideas just in advance as well. Looking at some of the you know, benefits and challenges of this. There, there's so many difference, differences on both sides, I should say, but if you're doing some recordings, um, my great thought about this, and I was thinking about back to, you know, we used to do specific numbers, letters, colors every week um, within our circle times. And of course we'd recap them every day uh, when we were with, within the classroom, but it can be something that if parents are doing, a, you know, if you're doing a recorded one for them, um, or if you're doing the live one, it still applies. But the children can look back on it if it's um, pre-recorded for yourself. So parents can actually access that wherever you're hosting it. And then um, this way they can, you know, let the child learn at their own pace, especially if it's potentially numbers, letters, et cetera, that they are um, they're trying to do. I'm just seeing in the, the chat, a couple of people are here doing some, some great dance, sing-alongs, things like that. Exactly. Puppets. There's so many great things you can actually do and it's there the challenges these days and of course a lot of challenges go around let's say that two-year-old who cannot sit my niece is four she cannot sit um but at the same time the challenges can be and one of the biggest ones that i think is um kind of goes unnoticed is people's access their access to the technology their access to you know good internet or even decent internet but being aware and making sure it also depends the community you are serving um, specifically, um, in the center I worked at, we worked in low income housing community. We fed that area, uh, for its child care. And uh, of course it was a very necessary place for us to be. And it was probably one of the most important places for us to be. Um, with all that said, the technology aspect was not great. And of course the, um, you know, accessibility to technology was very minimal. So you could be in that situation and even for yourself, you know, a lot of people these days are saying things like, um, you know, we're not great with tech. Uh, I am not great with tech. This 100%, I know Carmen can back me up. I look at the computer and I go, what does that do? Um, I'm not fabulous with tech, but the more you actually use it, the more you play around with it, it's actually not as scary as it looks. So do, just take some time for yourself as well. It's not easy. I won't say it's gonna be something you learn in a heartbeat, but please take the time for yourself because it can do some benefits for you. And if you're not going back to work quite yet, good time to do it all. I digress, you know, that balance between in-class and distance learning. So we had Missy on um, oh, two weeks ago, I believe, uh, might be timeline wrong, but anyways, we had Missy on just recently again, and she was telling us a little bit more about what they're doing at their center. So I wanted to recap because some of the things that she was doing um, is fantastic. And I've heard many other people doing very much the same thing. So uh, they were looking at doing broadcasting um, live. So what they were doing is within the center, uh, whether it was a circle time or, um, or an activity that they wanted to do, they would just set up a little Zoom and that child could join. And this way they were there participating um, and it helped them feel a part of the center as well and, and giving them a little bit of social interaction that you know, right now is, is minimal, but at the same time, it's still a great, a great and fun way to do it. I know my niece and my nephew are, they're always very excited to chat over. We, we do WhatsApp calls, video calls, and they're always very excited to, to chat with me and tell me about what's going on at home. Uh, as well, I, I don't generally just get, you know, up, up the face pictures, which is absolutely beautiful. But anyways, it's a lot of fun that way. As a center, you want to look back at building the community again. So within the center, prior to all of this crazy business that's going on right now, um, you you know you had a sense of unity. You had a sense of being a part of something, and it's something that we have to look at rebuilding once again and getting it back and up and going. So a couple of ways that we've heard uh, people like yourselves here on the chat right now um, been doing it. So uh, one of the ones that caught my eye was the buddy up system. So where they've been pairing a child at home with a child who's in the classroom, scheduling some calls on the variety of tech that whatever you choose, you know, the Zoom, FaceTime, WhatsApp, whatever you're doing, um, Google Meets, there's so many now, it's, it's unreal that's available to you, so please take the time. 
Um, so at the end of the day, they've been doing that so that this way these two children can buddy up if they're, let's say, for example, older children, maybe work on a project together uh, where they're maybe meeting different milestones and they meet a couple of times a week. Um, you know, even if it's only just like a 10 minute call, it does not have to be a long call by no means. So when younger children, you know, just having the chance to talk with their friends and do something with them. So whether this is an activity, whether this is participating in some songs, some puppets, as I've been seeing here on the chat, things like that um, are fantastic ways to go about that. And you're, you're taking the time to actually rebuild that, that community feeling. At the end of the day, the benefits for mom and dad are obviously huge. Um, and or guardian, whoever you may be, guardians, there's lots of great things that it helps include for mental health. You know, a child gets a chance to look forward to something, you know, at the right now, not so many trips happening, you know, you're not really going anywhere as much. So of course it's like, well, what are we gonna do today? Oh, the same thing, we do everything. Um, but at the end of the day, it gives them something to look forward to. Um, even for myself, I schedule calls with my friends. Um, I have like a standing weekly call with my best man, um, with my best friend. And it never changes, unless of course we're doing something different. But anyways, uh, it's just really nice to have that there. It helps them with the routine. Um, that's a huge piece right now, especially as we do get into the back to school routine. And if you do have children who are staying home, if you have children who are going, it's whatever is happening, it's just helping reestablish that routine. So, and your parents, this is a huge piece. I think that parents have had the chance right now to really dive in and have a chance to connect with their child's development and the levels that a teacher typically does. And it's a huge piece that I think parents, I don't want to say have been missing, but they should be, they should be looking at it. And of course, I feel like parents should have been looking at pre-COVID. But right now, I think that importance and that, you know, love for the teachers is just even, even greater today as it was then. So when it comes to supporting that learning at home, I wanted to just digress a little bit here. We had Angela back way, way back, she was talking, they started doing busy bags pretty much from day one. And so a couple of things you can do is, hey, you can send home whatever you want to send home. I think this busy bag idea is absolutely fantastic because it allows for a connection to be created. I am all about connecting. I always want it to be, you know, connecting not just with your parents, but with your children is a huge piece in building that relationship with them. So if you're being able to send something home to them, you can, it can be simple, folks. It can be crayons, paper, pencils. You know, maybe be careful on the age with the scissors. Just kidding, everybody. You know, do do what you do. Play doh, make some play doh if you want to send home some paints. Um, you know, maybe just make sure they're in the right types of containers. Um, I love the lacing. So if you want to send home anything, like it's actually pretty easy to make yourself one. Of course, just use something sturdy, obviously. But at the end of the day, here at Hi Mama, one of our first things we wanted to do when COVID broke out was, and we're, and we're still doing, I should say, is to support families at home and teachers at home and now teachers back in the classroom, wherever you may be, but doing our best to support everybody with activities that, you know, you can do at home or within the classroom, but have very simple materials um, available to you. And this has been a huge piece over the last several months, but both myself and Ms. Kaya have been working on, and even Ms. Carmen, um, to make sure that we're providing as much great content as possible. I'm going to bring Ms. Kaya back on. First of all, before we go into this, the watermelon, the salt thing, I've heard like, yes, do this. Don't, some people don't like watermelon, personal preference, but what, what does it do? Is it just like the contradiction between sweet and salty? Yeah, exactly. It makes it sweeter. And I've actually tried it. And like, um, I was in Colombia in February, and I got man fresh mango, and they okay. put lime and salt on the mango. And it just oh, was so good. Okay. Um, so I mean, Rhea, watering. I think you, you should try it. Just a little salt, though. All right, I, I will. I'll give it a go. But let's dive into our activity center. Because to let's be honest, everybody, uh, Kaya is probably the main heart of our activity center right now. There's a lot the entire team works on our activity center. But Kaya is definitely the biggest provider in that. So I'm going to let her take it away right here. 
Thank you. Thanks, Ria. Um, so our activity center, if you're looking for ways to, um, you know, continue the learning, especially now between half in class, half at home, and really keeping the, the flow with parents and keeping that connection with, with families, this is going to be right up your alley. And we, we have it available. You don't even need to be a high mama customer. That's the best thing. It's completely free. And it's completely for you to use at your, at your disposal. So um, I'll show you everyone uh, what it looks like here. So if you go to highmama.com slash daycare dash activities, we're gonna plug you with that link um, in our chat here, um, check it out. There's pro there's over a hundred activities right now um, and we're, we're pumping them out every week. Um, we, we create different themes um, and they go along with, uh, with different um, learning skills and development. And not only are they accessible at home, um, we wanna make sure that you're not going out and spending money and going to the store every week. So you'll likely either have all these materials in your classroom already or they're already in your family's home so they are quite accessible so when you click the uh, the link that we're going to provide to you this is what you'll see it's a whole database and you can even sort here by domain age and the different theme so this is uh, ice cream in a bag ria's favorite apparently <laughs> something i used to love doing as a kid i figured uh, all of our new uh, hi mama friends would love doing this one at home too so this was to go with our ice cream theme, and this is kind of what it'll look like. So a little description of it and everyone's favorite, a printable PDF. I know my EC friends love to print things out and make beautiful binders. We've been chatting with some of our uh, friends in the community, and they said they've been printing them out and um, putting them in a binder, which is a phenomenal idea so that in future years, you don't have to go online. You can just flip back through those printables and find exactly what you need and keep doing them. So online, it'll clearly outline the materials that you'll need, the learning outcomes, which are those domain skills and indicators. Um, and you can see that all the materials here as well. There's some playful questions, some extensions on the activity, how to make this more developmentally appropriate for older children, how to make it a little bit uh, more developmentally appropriate for younger children or less typically, um, typically developing children as well as the instructions with photos. I'm a visual learner, so I need those photos when I'm on Pinterest, I can't just read a blurb. So we got you with some photos and written instructions. And here's a closer look at the PDF that you can download. And the best part is you can actually send these to families too and have them on file. In Hi Mama, you can send them directly with a couple clicks, actually right to their, their phone and their Hi Mama inbox. Um, but of course, you don't need to be a Hi Mama customer to access these. They, they are completely free. So you can feel free to download those and email those through your email provider. That's that's the activity nutshell, uh, in a nutshell. Activity database in a nutshell, so many words. Um, <laughs> So Guys, yeah, day to day life. <laughs> that's my day to day life. Yeah, I've become more of a pro with taking photos and videos. It's it's definitely an art. Definitely. So I want to call out because we've we've definitely had a lot of great comments in the chat about you know what people are doing, but I'd love to hear a little bit more. Uh, take a moment instead of uh, questions coming from you guys. I'd love to hear a little more about what you're doing for back to school. And Miss Kai, if you want to keep your eye there on the chat a little bit. Um, sorry, what you're doing for distance learning and what does back to school look like in your area right now? That's a huge question. I know I can say for, um, of course, a different county to county um, here in Toronto. Well, I should say Ontario. It is up to each county to figure out what they want to do, how they want to open up. Uh, I can safely say that the community my brother and my sister-in-law live in are doing, um, my nephew is in grade three, I think now I've forgotten, he's going into grade three. That's sad guys, you're getting old when that happens. Um, and he's going in the middle of September at this point, whereas my niece who's supposed to go into JK has, um, has not yet been given a date for her first start. I know some places in the States are doing a virtual start and looking to you know return to the classroom in the October area. Um, Amanda, I see there you guys are doing in-person, remote, hybrid, um, all in the classrooms. So you guys are doing a little bit of everything. Um, I see New Jersey is moving to all remote learning. Very, very interesting here, guys. Um, keep them coming as well as what you're doing in your center. If you guys are doing a little bit of both, I'm sure we're kind of in the mix of things. Miss Kaya has been on our social media. Miss Kaya, have you been hearing anything about what people are up to yet in regards to back to school? 
Yeah, a little bit. It sounds like uh, some of our community is doing a little bit half and half to really continue the learning, um, what they're doing online. And if the children are in the classroom, making sure it's continuous and uh, making sure it's fair. So just because you're not able to go in the classroom, your experience is still going to be great at home. And then Rhea, I think you and I were actually talking before mm -hmm. this webinar, kind of an interesting idea is if you are, you know, split half or in classroom some days, half or at home, um, providing materials and experiences to making sure it's seamless. Or even if all of your kids are at home, uh, making sure that they have like little busy bags to go along with um, the circle time that you're doing and having yep. the same materials. Maybe they don't have those amazing flashcards. Um, so you can create flashcards. You can buy them pretty inexpensively at dollar store as well. Um, and providing those resources, that's something that we've been hearing a lot, just to make things very seamless from home and in-center learning. That's a huge piece, and as well, too, as we look to transition fully when it does happen fully back to the classroom, it makes that transition just, like you said, much smoother, easier, you know, and especially getting them into the routine and things like that. So a couple of great things I've been hearing. Down in Illinois, uh, remote learning right now, um, you're... I think Zara, if I'm saying this right, so you're third and sixth graders, um, two different plans, and you're getting you're in the middle of getting your master's, so you're you're trying to figure out preschool and things like that. That's there's a tough thing going on there. Uh, Emily, we have an online program with two products, so one's daily lessons videos uh, and one live Zoom Friday meetings, and then the second one's a private one with one-on-one -on -one Zoom once a week, all online. Uh, in your county, you guys are doing a mix of hybrid and full time. I feel like the hybrid and full time is like the most places are going. A couple here I've seen have been, um, you know, for the vulnerable ones, everyone's looking at having them back full time. I think that that is, um, that's very important. Very, very important right now for, for everybody there. Uh, Peel region up our way, everybody, September 14th, the schools are starting. I know here in Ontario, as of September one, uh, centers are allowed to go to full, full capacity. So I'm very, um, very interested to see how that one goes uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks. Um, let's see, back to school in our area. This is Sue. Your grandkids are, they're home and they've not given parents much info. Yeah, it, I think like a lot of, um, a lot of centers are, I shouldn't say centers, but a lot of um, areas are in the same situation. We only found out, for example, my nephew just this past week. So it's definitely something that's been you know, we've wanted to know, and I know, I know, Kai, you'd be able to go into this a little more deeper, but um, within the States, you guys start a little earlier than typically here in Canada, so. Yeah, some, some States do, and I think it's state to state and sometimes county yeah. to county, so yeah, some exactly. are back, some aren't, you know. Exactly. Um, and Rhea, I did want to mention, I, we've yeah. had a few questions on um, any tips on in-person and social distancing tips in the classroom. Yeah. Um, so we have some phenomenal educators on here and some who are already back in the classroom. So if you have any tips on how to social distance in the classroom, um, some things that you've been doing, please share them. This is a fantastic, supportive community. Um, there was no handbook to COVID-19, no. so please share your resources um, so that, you know, other educators in other states and other provinces and countries are able to use those. You know, we're a fantastic network here and we want to make sure that uh, we can use those resources. So if you are back in the classroom, what are some things that you've done? Pop them in the chat there so that uh, other educators can can use them. We'd, we'd really love to hear that. I agree. That's that one's the one that comes from experience at its finest from all of these fantastic educators. Um, I'm still seeing a couple of people here who have said that they their families, they're not going back until October. They're fully online. Um, this is absolutely amazing. A couple of great ones here. A lot of children are doing remote learning, especially the school age kiddos. Um, Maria says that she's been using the pool noodles in the classroom. I just see so many great things and so many bad things happening all at once. <laughs> it must be a lot of fun. It's like a party all in one go. And yet I can see just if it was my niece, Kaya, you'd be hit off the head from here, um, from where I am, which we, we're not on the same sides of the of the city over here. So let's see here. We've had a couple of people come through. So there's a couple of people are still looking at reopening. Uh, I agree. Take your time. Don't reopen until you guys are ready. I know it's hard, but take your time there. 
Um, Andrea, a couple of baseball caps. I got to read this a little bit more with attached visors for laminating leftovers from the kids. And oh, is that kind of like you've made visors? That's a really cool idea from a baseball cap. That is fantastic. Miss Kaya, feel free to as well if you jump in. Yeah. One. Um, the the hula hoops, and I think I saw this for maybe one of our customers. They had hula hoops, and it was literally just around them, and like the the children would would walk with them. Um, and that was oh, also where they did their their floor work. So if they're doing like math sheets or something, I think it was with dice. Um, they would roll the dice, and it wouldn't go halfway across the room because they had their hula hoop as a barrier. So not mm -hmm. only are they in their own bubble but it's, it's great for um, keeping all the materials in a bubble too. So hula hoops stock up now. It's like back when, if we knew Zoom this time last year and bought all the stocks in Zoom, we'd all be rich. So right? I'm saying it now, buy hula hoops. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. So a couple of great ones as well. We've, we've seen this one. I think it seems to be working for a lot of people as well uh, is just having, you know, tape down on the floors, of course, creating like arrows, things like that. Um, and, and the, obvious one too is we've been limiting the amount of children in the classroom for a reason that's there to help a keep teachers safe as well as keep parents safe and the children safe um cassandra's got some feet stickers on the floor uh cassandra if you can hear me i would love to see a picture of what these feet stickers look like um i'm ria at hi mama.com <laughs> i really want to know what these feet stickers look like um, victoria just threw in one actually victoria that was phenomenal to model you need yep. to model kids are sponges how have, how have i never thought of that so she says modeling um is how we've taught social distancing and to wear a mask it's become the norm it, it really has oh. so they see you wearing masks and doing your distance doing your part hand washing etc they're going to do it too that's a really great point that's i think the huge the biggest takeaway for all of us actually is we're we're their number one role models as well as mom and dad and by you know creating that relationship with mom and dad being on the same page modeling everything will go just that much easier and you know it makes anxiety levels drop um janelle I, I hope i'm saying this right so if you use your learning centers make them interesting so the children use the whole room for example if you have a writing table and had a project to make a birthday card for everyone that month um then you guys would use that area uh, but making blocks kitchen areas not so crowded so spreading it out i'm getting that idea is just making sure you have things available spreading it out uh, but also as well, keeping your uh, learning centers going. Awesome, awesome work, everybody here. I think everyone has had some great, great takeaways from, from this. I want to do a couple of great shout outs uh, that we've been collecting here. Carmen, of course, has been collecting them as we've been going through. So we have Amy. Uh, they've been doing Zoom and they've learned the best to mute the children at certain times, show and tell, story time. Uh, I think that's a key. I think we, we have mute here at Hi Mama for a reason as well. It um, works really, uh, really specifically during big meetings. Um, Jessica is using Screen Classify. I hope I'm saying that right. And Google Classroom, fantastic. Uh, we have a virtual summer camp via Zoom and PowerPoint. Ooh, interesting. So a theme per week. Uh, and you've been covering developmental areas uh, for, and also as well in Spanish. Uh, I think I needed to sign up for this one. Um, just to get my Spanish up to date here, folks. Um, we've uh, lots of Zoom classes, uh, busy bags as well with materials for that time, online programs. Everyone, no matter what you guys are doing, and maybe Miss Kai, if you want to add to this, you're doing a fantastic job. Like you said, Kai, there's there's no book for this. There's no guidance for this. We're doing our best in a time that is absolutely crazy. And I, I think that you know, teachers, at the end of the day, we need to. Make sure you guys get the recognition you deserve um, and, and getting it out there and just being a little bit more vigilant to, to advocate for it as well. I don't know, Kai, do you wanna add anything there? Yeah, I wanted to say, you know, we've been seeing so many amazing tips come through in the chat and um, really great conversation. And unfortunately, we only have this one hour together. We, we are here every week and we would love to continue this conversation outside of this webinar. So um, if you find us on social media, hi, mama, we'll, we'll send you the um, we'll go to the next slide in a couple slides here and show yeah. you how to spell it out, um, but H-I-M-A-M-A, -M -A -M -A, continue the conversation, um, really create that community. And uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, we're on Pinterest, Twitter, et cetera. 
Um, yeah, we'll skip it. There they are. Oh, yeah. So yeah. this is how you'll search them. Um, just our name, usually type it in. We're probably the first to pop up, hopefully. And um, continue the conversation with your tips there. We'd love to see you on there, give you some shout outs too. And of course, highmama.com is the home of the activity database. There's, hope, I want thousands of activities one day. We're gonna continue this forever, right? Yeah, yeah, it will be fantastic. Yeah. So jump back. Uh, first of all, post your pictures on social media. We'd love to see them. I, especially, I wanna see the, the feet thing, okay? I'm yes, sorry. tag us. I wanna know, tag us, tag us, tag us. Tag us. We'd, I'd love to see them. And, uh, and if there's any pictures you wanna share, for tips, tricks, things like that. Um, of course, you know, maybe don't post a picture of a child. We, we want to be appropriate of that too. So popping back here, I'm going to go backwards. Um, please take some time. Um, Ms. Kaya, you've had the chance to see our, our benchmark study um, just evolve over the last couple of years. And I've had the chance over the last two years, but please take some time to fill out our benchmark survey. This, with, this is a one of a kind report guys. And at the end of the day, your feedback is what drives and helps us do everything we're doing here at Hi Mama to A, make it the best program you guys can have possible as well as providing just any, everything resource wise for you guys. Okay. So please check that out. Carmen is going to post the link in the, in the sticky note for you there at the top. So it will be in the blue, uh, the blue box as well next week. So show notes and recording, they're going to be sent out tomorrow as per normal, everybody next week, we're talking about you know, back to school, of course, it's it's the time we're here already. I don't know what happened. Back to school, talking about, of course, that that second wave in regards to, you know, what the COVID-19 closure plan is, because I hope we don't have to do this, folks. But, you know, it's all in the forefront of everybody's mind and we want to make sure. So that's September 3rd. Holy cow, September already. Last but not least, as well, you guys can find in the in your email tomorrow. So if you don't get a chance to get it today, but in as well at the top, there's the links in the file here for you to get your certificate. If you want to get it now, you just have to download it as a PDF and make sure you pop in your name, your center name. It's all shared in the files section here on the, and you should be able to get everything within there. Last but not least, Thank you for joining us here today. It's been a pleasure as always. Ms. Kaya, it's been a pleasure. I get to see you every day, but I love having you on the webinars. So I, I'm very fortunate, um, but I love having you. Thank you for joining us. If there's, is there any, you know, words of advice you want to leave us with today before we sign off? Yeah, I, you're doing, all the educators here, you guys are all doing amazing. You're sharing your tips, your tricks, everything. Let's keep this community alive, um, you know, there was no there was no handbook to this pandemic and um you know let's let's really use each other to our advantage here so um connect with each other and take care of each other and take care of yourself thank you everyone thank you everyone oh miss carmen you made it everybody for joining us today as always stay happy stay healthy stay safe and we'll be back next week miss carmen is there anything i might have missed just to make sure <laughs> Oh, Carmen, we can't hear you. We lost her, folks. Well, we didn't, but no, no. Carmen's speechless, everybody. Well, thank you, Carmen. And uh, we'll make sure to get everything out to you guys tomorrow. Carmen is fantastic that way. Once again, thank you, thank you. Everything's in the files there. Um, Carmen Zeile, your audio is just not on your on your working end today, but that's okay. Audio is just not kicking in. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next week. Bye.